Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be trying out the blending brushes from Picket Fence Studios. Uh, they call them life-changing blending brushes. So I don't, I don't know if they're life-changing, but we're going to find out if they are. Um, they were kind enough to send me uh, this set and a couple other sets actually that I'm going to include in some giveaways. But um, interestingly, these brushes look exactly like the cosmetic brush that I use to put on my makeup. <laughs> and they feel exactly the same too. And it's, I just thought, thought it was kind of funny. So I'm gonna use four different colors of Distress Oxide inks. This first color is Abandoned Coral. And I have not previously tried these blending brushes. So I'm going in cold, not knowing exactly the best way to use them. So I'm gonna give you some tips as we go along here. I'm not gonna do any speeding up the speeding up of the video. Uh, it's all going to be in real time. And I just thought I'd give you my thoughts and impressions on using these brushes. So the first thing I noticed, and I think I knew this in the back of my mind because I'd seen these brushes be used online in a few different places, is that it's a very, very light application of color. And I think having such a light application of color is great when you're trying to get really smooth blends. So I'm gonna switch colors here and go to Squeeze Lemonade. And I did all the research online and people were saying one of the ways you can clean the brushes is just by wiping it on a stamp chamois or on a wet towel or something like that. So it'll just wipe away some of that ink color. So I've wiped it off on this very dirty stamp chamois and I've gone back into Squeeze Lemonade. So I'm blending in, I'm kind of trying to get these colors to kind of mix. So at this point, I'm not using the handle of the brush so much as I am just holding the head of the brush. Um, I found I had a little better control that way. And the other thing I noticed is that when I'm applying color to the brush, that I really need to kind of swirl it onto the ink pad and that adds a lot more ink. Um, before when I was just kind of like pouncing it on, it wasn't applying enough ink onto that brush. So I found that I have to swirl it onto the ink pad and then bring it onto my cardstock. By the way, the cardstock I'm using today is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. It's the cardstock I use all the time. It's kind of like my go-to. So I'm blending on tumbled glass and then I'm going to switch colors here and I'm going to move to Seedless Preserves, which is the last color. And I really think this Seedless Preserves ink pad is pretty juicy because I didn't feel like I swirled the blending brush on this ink pad a ton. I thought it was just about just as much as I had the other ones. But you'll notice as I come in, it seems to really saturate the edge of my cardstock. Either that or this is just a really intense color. So I started blending that in and my idea behind this blended piece is I'm actually going to use a die cut to cut out a circle. This is the die right here. I'm going to use it to create a shaker card. So that die I'm using is actually a new die from Paper Smooches. Um, Paper Smooches, Kim, the owner and the designer, she took a little break and they now have a new release. I'm super excited. And this is just one of the new products that they're releasing. So I'm going to take this blended piece and I'm going to cut it down a little bit because it is going to go onto the card front with the shaker area over the top. So I'm going to kind of put this portion of the card together and then I'll work on the actual shaker. So I'm making my card base out of that same color of cardstock, that same cardstock, but it's a different weight. This is the 110 pound and I scored it at five and a half to create a top folding card. I then put some tape runner adhesive. This is Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back of the blended piece and then directly onto the front of the card. So that part is done now and I'm going to figure out where I want this die. So this die is actually a set, I think it's of like five or six different circles and they're like scalloped or um, like zigzag edge circles. And this is the flaunters die set. I'm going to use, uh, this is the platinum six die cutting machine from Spellbinders to cut it out of some white cardstock. And then I'm also going to cut this frame out of some Nina environmental desert storm cardstock. I will eventually change the color of cardstock I'm using for this uh, frame, but for now this is what I was using. So I'm going to puzzle piece this frame into that white cardstock, and then I'm going to turn it over and use some tape to tape that in place. 
Before I do that, while I've got my die cutting machine out, I'm going to die cut the Celebrate die from Paper Smooches out of some black cardstock. This is some Licorice Twist cardstock from Basil. So now I'm just using some regular scotch tape just to hold this frame in place. This is the back of that cardstock. And I'm going to build my shaker area on top of this. So I'm going to take some heat resistant acetate. I don't, it doesn't necessarily need to be heat resistant for this particular card. It's just what I have and use. And I'm going to cut it out so it's just a little bigger than that uh, window frame. I'll add some Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive and then press that acetate or window plastic down onto the frame. This is the, the main surface area of my shaker card area. So now I'm going to take some foam tape. This is a huge roll of foam tape from 3M and Scotch. And I tore off a really long piece and then folded it over so that it creates a double depth of foam. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it down so it's a little bit more narrow. This just makes it a little bit easier to manipulate and kind of curve around that circle shape. So I'm using some scissors and cutting this down. And then I'm going to remove the release paper from both sides. When you remove the release paper on both sides, it lets the foam really kind of bend around in different shapes. It's a lot easier to apply it to a circular shaker card area like this. So I'm putting that foam down, wrapping it all the way around until I get to the, to the very beginning again. And I'll just use some scissors to snip off the excess and then close up that circle. So now I'm going to take some uh, foam adhesive, the rest of it that I've already folded over twice, and use that to fill in the other areas around that circle area. I'm going to fill that shaker area with this sequence mix from L Little Things by Lucy's Cards. This is the Over the Rainbow mix, and it's so pretty. It has these half pearls and rhinestones. It just reminds me of a birthday party, so that's why I thought it would be fun to have these little bits on a birthday card. So I'm removing the backing on the foam tape, and then I'm going to very carefully turn my card front over and line it up with that window shaker piece. Press it down with my fingertips, and then I'm left with a really fun shaker card. I'm gonna flip this over, you can see all those little half pearls and gems are inside that area. At this point, I decided I wanted to switch up the cardstock that I'm using, so I've cut that uh, die cut out of some black cardstock, and then I just glued it on top of the craft colored cardstock that I had in there earlier. So I'm just going to line that up and press that right over the top. As far as the die cut greeting that says celebrate, as far as that goes, I'm going to change up the adhesive I'm using and I'm actually going to switch to some Gina K Designs Connect Glue and that's because it has a finer tip on the bottle so that I can put little tiny dots of glue on the back of this die cut. So I'm holding it with my tweezers while I get it in place and lining it up on the front of the card. So that's going to finish the card for today. I really loved all that really soft blending with those life-changing blending brushes. Um, I love the intense look of using foam blending tools, but this really soft look from the blending brushes is also really neat. Thanks so much for joining me for another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. I will catch you in another card video very soon. Mm -hmm.